Muslim in the Aqil. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon the servant of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Muslim ibn Aqil is the trustee of Abi Abdullah al Hussein, peace be upon him. Muslim ibn Aqil ibn Abi Talib is the cousin of Imam Hussein, peace be upon him. Muslim ibn Aqil has a very high status in the eyes of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Tonight, we will end this program, this journey, by speaking of Muslim ibn Aqil, peace be upon him. The companions of Abi Abdullah al Hussein, Salamullah alayhi. May my soul be sacrificed for him. The companions, the Ansar of Hussein, peace be upon them, are companions like no other. I will narrate to you a tradition. Imam Ali ibn al Hussein al Sajjad, Salamullahi alayhi. He says, My father, al Hussein, gathered his companions and began to speak to them. He said to them, I praise Allah. I praise Allah, the most glorified be He. I thank you. I praise Allah, glorified be He, and thank Him for all happiness and all misery. He said, O oh Allah, I commend you that you have honored us with prophethood, meaning that you had honored Banu Hashim by giving them prophethood to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and taught us the Quran and made us learn jurist. You taught us the ilm. As for you, my companions, now listen. As for you, my companions, I do not know anyone more loyal than you, my companions. You see, Muslim ibn Aqil has this daraja because he is counted amongst the Ansar of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. He is counted amongst those companions whom there are none like in this world until the Day of Judgment. There will be none like the Ansar of Abi Abdullah al Hussein, peace be upon them. Muslim ibn Aqil was given a title even greater than being the cousin of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Muslim ibn Aqil was given the title of Safir al Hussein, the one who represents Abi Abdullah al Hussein, the one who is the trustee of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Abi Abdullah trusted Muslim ibn Aqil with his life. The Prophet وسلم, prophesied the killing of Muslim ibn Aqil. He said, when Ali ibn Abi Talib asked him, he said, O oh, Rasulullah, do you love Aqil? He said, Wallah, I love Aqil. And I love Aqil for two reasons. I love Aqil because of Abu Talib, and I love Aqil because his son, Muslim, will be killed for your son. Muslim na Aqil will be killed for the cause of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Muslim story is a story that we hear time and time again. It's a story that is very lengthy and long and we will try our best to summarize what we can from this story. After the demise of Muawiyah the Kufans sent letters towards Imam al Hussein It is narrated that they sent 12,000 letters. These 12,000 letters were sent to Imam al Hussein telling him, Ya Aba Abdullah, it is time for you to come to us, to Kufa. We are lost, we need an Imam, and we do not know what to do. The minions, Umar ibn Sa'ad and his gang, Umar ibn Sa'ad and his posse, they heard of this news, and they found out that the Wali over Kufa and Nu'man did not have much power to get rid of Muslims. 
So they decided themselves to write to Yazid. They told Yazid, Yazid, the Kufans have wrote letters to Imam al Hussein alayhi salam asking him to come to Kufa. What will you do now? He said, We will take Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, who was the Wali of Basra, and Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad will take his brother Uthman as the Wali of Basra, and Ubaidullah will come to Kufa. This is the story behind in the background. Now, what happens now? <coughs> What happened is that Imam al Hussein alayhi salam sent Muslim Na'aqil with his letter. He said, Furthermore, after accepting the letters of the Kufans, he said, Furthermore, for you, the last of your letters arrived to me. The last of your letters have arrived to me from Hani and Sa'id. For I have understood your request from your letters. In what you said we have no Imam we have no Imam in our city and we want you to come for maybe Allah will unite us under your guidance and you can guide us as well I have sent to you my brother listen I have sent to you my brother the son of my uncle and my trustee whom I trust from my progeny Muslim Ibn Aqil to report to you about your affairs to report to you about the affairs of Ahl al-Kufa if this report agrees to what you have written I will soon be with you in Kufa you must be clear to the fact that the Imam is only one who follows the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and serves Allah in all matters in fairs and justice honesty and truth this was the Risala the Kitab that Abi Abdullah al Hussein, peace be upon him, sent with Muslim Na'aqil to go to Kufa. Muslim now arrives in Kufa. The Shia in Kufa, the Muslimin in Kufa are happy for the coming of Muslim. It is narrated 30,000 to approximately 80,000 Kufans swore an allegiance to Imam al Hussein alayhi salam through Muslim Na'aqil. Of these preachers and of these ulama and of these fuqaha in Kufa were Abbas ibn Abi Habib al-Shakiri and Al-Habib ibn Mudahar al-Azdi. And the number adds up to 80,000. 30,000 to 80,000 people. Remember this number. This number is very important. 80 to 30,000 when he arrived in Kufa. Swore an oath of allegiance to be with Imam al Hussein. It continues. And like I said, the cohorts of Yazid did not like the fact that Al-Nu'man was very weak as the Wali of Kufa. Ibn Ziyad began his way towards Kufa. Ibn Ziyad was very cunning. Ibn Ziyad, what did he do? He disguised himself in a green amama and he wore clothes fully covering himself and then he entered with a small group of people he entered with a small group of people to try to deceive the Kufans. Everybody thought that it was Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam to the point where the Kufans would actually come and kiss his feet and kiss his forehead. He was very deceiving. And it was not until he got towards where? To the castle, to the castle behind Masjid al-Kufa, Qasr al-Imara. He also tricked al numar ibn Bashir. He forced his way inside and he said, O oh people, today I am your wali over Kufa. He gained power and he began slowly to deceive the people of Kufa by money, by tricks, by sending the mothers and the daughters and the husbands and the brothers to whom is going to revolt with Muslim. Why? To cause a problem. This was an issue. This was an issue because the Kufans' hearts weren't that very strong to the point where it is narrated that he brought one of his slaves to act as a Shi'i to come to this masjid over here and to listen to the ears who gave allegiance to Muslim so they can quickly and deceivably become a spy inside. They gained the trust and, and Ibn Ziyad gave them 3,000 dirhams 
He gave them 3,000 dirhams and he told them, take this money with you, take this money with you, and then if you see somebody in the masjid, make sure you try to deceive him. Tell him, I really want to see Abi Muslim Naqeel. I want to see Muslim. Tell him. In fact, this man came, the slave of Ibn Ziyad, and he found somebody in this masjid, in Masjid Al Kufa, and he told them, I yearn to see Muslim Naqeel, and I love the son of Fatima, and I want to aid him after taking an oath of trust from him and a trustee of him. After taking an oath of trust from him and they began to trust him, what happened? They trusted him, they showed him Muslim. And when they showed him Muslim, right away Ibn Ziyad knew of the story of Hani ibn Urwa. And he knew that Hani ibn Urwa was not sick as he claimed to be sick. Because Hani ibn Urwa, when, when Muslim first came to Kufa, he was in the house of Al-Mukhtar. And after that he took him where? To the house of Hani. Because the situation got very difficult in Kufa. Ibn Ziyad was very cunning, like I said, he was very cunning to try to distract the people. Now, after this happened, and the issue between Ibn Ziyad and the Kufans started losing trust back and forth, Shuraik, there's a man by the name of Shuraik. His name is Shuraik ibn Al-A'war Al-Hamdani. This guy, this man, was not a follower of Muawiyah or Ibn Ziyad. And he wanted to kill Ibn Ziyad. Ibn Ziyad also considered him a friend. He liked him very much. Shuraik was sick when he came from Basra. And Shuraik stayed at the house of whom? At the house of Hani. You see, Shuraik had an idea. He told Muslim, he told Muslim, O oh Muslim, when Ibn Ziyad comes, I will signal for you. I will signal for you that what? When I signal, come from the back, take your sword and whip him on the back and kill him. Make sure you do that and that will be our chance to get rid of Ibn Ziyad. When Hani heard this, Hani did not like what happened here. And Hani said, I do not want blood to be shed in my house. What happened after? When Ibn Ziyad came to, Shura, to his house, and he was sick in his bed, he signaled, I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty, more than once. And Muslim stood in the back and did not go inside and strike him on, he did not kill him. He did not kill him. And we will know the reason after, inshallah. To the point where he repeated, I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty. Ibn Ziyad became very curious and confused as to why is he keep on calling thirsty, thirsty, thirsty. And then of course, Hani told him, He's delirious, he's been sick, leave him be. Now after, after Ibn Ziyad left, Shuraik came, he came to Muslim. He came to Muslim and he told him, Ya Muslim, why did you not kill him? We had a chance. We had a chance to get rid of Ibn Ziyad. Muslim said, Oh Shuraik, for two reasons. The first being that I detest that I do this in Hani's house because Hani himself detested it. The second reason, a tradition, a hadith that I heard from Rasulullah, peace be upon him and his family. He said, faith, Iman, has prevented treacherous assassination. A believer does not assassinate. Now, after this incident, we move on, we skip some historical events and we go forward in the timetable. You see, Hani always used to come to Ibn Ziyad. He wanted to show Ibn Ziyad that, you know what, I'm, you know, trying to fit in as well. But since he began staying, since Muslim began staying at his house, there was a problem. There was a problem. And then Ibn Ziyad noticed that Hani is not home and since Ibn Ziyad had a spy inside the house and he knows Hani where he is and he knows where Muslim is. Ibn Ziyad forcefully sent his minions and he told them, go get Hani for me. They went to go get Hani. Hani came to Ibn Ziyad and they asked him. Ibn Ziyad said, Hani, are you keeping Muslim at your house? He said, no. Are you sure? 
He said, no, I'm not keeping it in my house, and I swear to you, I'm not. If you want to, go check. Then, <coughs> Han ibn Urwa was taken to Ibn Ziyad, and Ibn Ziyad asked him, he told him, are you keeping Muslim in your house? He said, no. He said, are you sure? He brought his spy. Hani noticed the spy. He's like, you know what? Everything is done now. There's no point in hiding it. Then he told him, give me Muslim right now. He said, I will not give you Muslim no matter what happens. And that is when he was imprisoned by Ibn Ziyad. Now, this is where Muslim ibn Aqeel hears of this news that Hani has been taken into prison. What happens now? Muslim السلام, begins his revolt. He said, I will take those who gave me allegiance and let them all come to Masjid al Kufa. My brothers and sisters, behind me here in this land right here, 30,000 people or more gathered who swore oaths to protect Imam al Hussein. السلام. They came here and they began to revolt against Ibn Ziyad al Lain. They began to revolt against Ibn Ziyad, throwing rocks at him, cursing him, cursing his mother, insulting his mother, until he began to do his cunning ways. He began to trick them again. The woman came to the husband saying, what are you going to do when Ahl al-Sham is going to come to Kufa? You're going to leave us alone? Same thing, the brother, same thing with the sister. Muslim alayhi salam. Muslim alayhi salam prayed in Masjid al Kufa, Jama'ah, together with over 30,000 people. And by the time he finished his salah, there were 13 people left. By the time Muslim alayhi salam finished his salah, there were 13 people left. By the time he exited from al kinda door, there was nobody behind him. He began walking the streets of Kufa alone. Gharib, nobody by him, no house to go to. He stopped by a door of a lady, her name is Tawa. This lady came out of her door. And she told him, Oh man, what are you doing in this dark night? Why are you alone? He said to her, Can I have some water, please? She gave him water. He drank. She came back and he was still there sitting on the doorsteps. She told him, It is unlawful for you to be here. You cannot be here, you're a man. She told, he told him, he told her, let me stay this night here in your house. She said, you have no family to go to? You have no family to go to? Do you have a house to go to? Muslim is gharib here in Kufa. He's gharib here in Kufa. He told them, I am Muslim ibn Aqil ibn Abi Talib. I am the Safir of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. She made him enter the house. She put food for him. He did not eat. He spent the entire night praying and praying and supplicating in dua and prayer. Her son, her son saw that Tawa was coming inside and out of the courtyard, from the courtyard to the house. He began getting suspicious and he said, Mother, who are you keeping in there? She did not answer him. Mother, who are you keeping in there? He repeated his question three times. Three times he repeated his question. She said, in there is Muslim Naqeel. And at that time, Ibn Ziyad al lain gave a reward for anybody who can find Muslim. This man went and told Ibn Ziyad and 300 men and more came to the house of Tawa'a. It was a small alleyway. He fought one after another. Only one can come at a time. The musibah is so grand until 
they pushed him inside the house. This is the son of Aqil, the son of Abu Talib. This is somebody who was raised in the house of Abu Talib, whom witnessed with Imam Ali alayhi salam and his courage of Imam Ali alayhi salam. He fought them and he fought them and he could not do anything about it. The hadith says they went on top of the roof and they began throwing fire and rocks to burn the house down. It is narrated that there is one man who cut off the lower lip of Muslim. And another man came and hit him on the head and then they pushed him in a trench and he fell down. He was taken to the presence of Ibn Ziyad. It is narrated that before he entered the Qasr, Muslim saw some water by him. He said, quench my thirst with this water. Muslim Ibn Amr, somebody else, his name was Muslim. Muslim Ibn Amr, listen to this person what he says. He says, do you see, O Muslim, how cold the water is? He says, by Allah, you will not get a single drop of this water until you taste the hamim, the fires of hell. Muslim said, who unto you? Who are you? He tells him, I am the one that knows the truth yet denies it. I am Muslim Ibn Amr al-Bahuli, is la'in. Muslim tells him, may your mother have never given you birth. What disgust is this you have? Your heart feels no remorse? O son of Aba Bahlul, O son of Aba Bahuli, are more suitable to drink. You are more suitable to drink from the Hamim than me. Muslim entered the Qasr of Ibn Ziyad and Ibn Ziyad began insulting him and insulting Imam Al-Husayn alayhi salam. He began insulting him and insulting Imam Al-Husayn alayhi salam. He told them, take him on top of the Qasr. Hit him and cut off his head and throw his body on the floor. Muslim told him, wait, I have a wasiyah. Umar ibn Sa'ad was sitting in the gathering. Umar ibn Sa'ad has a far relationship with Muslim ibn Aqil. He is a relative from, but, but from very far away, a far cousin, we can say. He told him, I have loans in Al Kufa that I took when I came here. Here is my shield and my sword, go sell them. And I have 700 dirhams that need to be, that need, that need to be paid off. O oh, Umar ibn Sa'ad, pay these off for me. And send a letter to Imam al-Husayn, telling him the people of Kufa, the people of Kufa do not want you and go back. And for my body, when I die, make sure somebody shrouds it. Umar ibn Sa'ad went to where? He went and he told Ibn Ziyad this and this and this. He said, as for the first request, go ahead and do it. As for the second request, if Hussein doesn't answer us, we won't answer him. Let him come. And as for the third request, we deal with the body, not you. Ibn Ziyad asked the same person who hit Muslim on the head, Bukair ibn Hamran. He told him, take him on the top of the Qasr. Take him and make sure you hit him on the head. Muslim was taken to the top of Qasr al-Imara. He was given water to drink. Every time he would lift the pot of water to drink, it would bleed because they cut off his lip. He lifted up again, it would bleed. In one hadith it says that his entire lip fell in the pot. He was taken on the top of the Qasr. Bukair al Lain hit Muslim with his sword on the neck once. His head did not cut off. He hit him again. He cut off his head and he threw him down. The castle here in this masjid behind the Qasr. When Bukair was asked, what was the ha how was Muslim when he was going towards death? He told them all he was doing was supplicating and praying and doing salawat upon Muhammad wa al Muhammad. He was killed on the 8th of the Hijjah, Yom al Tarwiyah. And by the shrine of Muslim is the shrine of Hani ibn Arwa. Hani ibn Arwa, to 
together here in Bari with Muslim. Subhanallah. They died together. They were killed in the same place. And here they are now, buried together side by side, companions even in death. Companions even in their grave sites. I forgot to mention that when Han ibn Urwa was taken to the castle of Ibn Ziyad, there's an important part I had to mention. I had to mention this part to show you how disgusting Han ibn Ziyad was. I had to show you how cunning and evil this man was. I did mention that Hani was taken to Ibn Ziyad's castle and he was taken to Ibn Ziyad's castle and when he did not want to give news about Muslim Na'aqeen buried or where Muslim Na'aqeen, sorry, was staying Ibn Ziyad was such a tyrant and was so evil Hani is narrated to be in his high 80s and just about 90 years old, old man, old man, very old man. He used to have a walking stick. And it is narrated that Ibn Ziyad took this walking stick from him and began to beat him and beat him on the face until the skin from his forehead began to peel off. He says that even the blood covered his beard, his white beard changed color from the blood on his face. Until the stick broke, Ibn Ziyad beat him. Now you see, this whole time, when a Muslim was killed, when a Muslim was martyred, Hani was in jail. After that, after the killing of Muslim, not by a law, Muhammad ibn Ash'ath came to Ibn Ziyad and told him, Ibn Ziyad, you know about Muslim, you know about Hani. Hani has a tribe and he is loved by his tribe. Be careful. He said, you know what, let's just tell them that he's okay. Because Ibn Ziyad knows that if the tribe find out that he is dead right now, it would cause a problem. Hence, they sent Shurayh inside to see Hani. And Shurayh came to the tribesmen and told them, your Hani is okay, he is not dead. The news that you guys received is false. After that, he sent for Hani to be taken outside in the slaughterhouse where they sell meats in the public of Kufa city of Kufa, so Masjid al-Kufa, outside the Masjid al-Kufa, where they sell meat, where they slaughter meat, Hani was sent out there. He was blindfolded. He began to complain, where is my tribesmen? Where is my family? And after that, Hani was also killed in the souq, in the bazaar of Kufa, where they slaughter meat in, the, in Kufa. His head was cut off, and mind you, both Muslim السلام, and Hani السلام, both of them, Muslim and Hani, were taken after with no head and dragged in the streets of Kufa. We see today how savage terrorists attack and how they behead people and treat them in this animalistic way. These people only learn from their forefathers. Ibn Ziyad is one of their forefathers. Because look, look at this, look at the tyranny. The tyranny is that after the head was cut off, for, for proof, Ibn Ziyad had to send his heads where? To Yazid. He sent these two heads of Muslim alayhi salam. And the head of Hani to Yazid ibn Muawiyah as proof that look, I have taken care of Muslim, I have taken care of Hani, no need to worry. And that, my brothers and sisters, is the story of Muslim and the story of Hani. One helped the other. Hani helped Imam al Hussein, and Muslim helped Imam al Hussein. Both Hani and Muslim are of the Ansar of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. To be able to sacrifice yourself to serve the religion, to be able to sacrifice yourself to serve the son of the daughter of the Messenger of Allah is high reward and high status. And look at the reward now. By Allah, look at the reward now. How many millions of visitors, how many millions of visitors go and visit Imam Hussein 
How many millions of visitors come and visit Hani? How many millions of visitors come and visit Muslim? Look at the rewards. And by Allah, the reward in paradise is even higher. Their reward in paradise is even higher because they, their blood seeped only to serve Abi Abdullah al-Hussein.